Hey there everybody, T-Shirt Booth here for GSHelper.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a random scene generator without repeating a scene until you've played all the scenes. And um, I really wanted to um, make this video step by step and show you how to do each thing um, but unfortunately the first one turned out to be about 30 minutes long and I messed it up halfway through and then the second one uh, I messed it up again after about 15 minutes so um, I'm just going to I, I have the demo and you're going to be able to download it for free um, over at gshelper.com find the video underneath it you'll be able to download it um, and right now I'm going to walk you through every rule um, while it's already there. So we're not actually going to create the rules, but I'm going to show you what each rule is and why it does it. Um, just makes things a little simpler for a, a, a demo so big. Um, so the first thing we need to do is go into tables. And under our table we have our, our table one that I created. And to create a table you just hit the plus sign here and it pops up here. Um, so I'm going to go into this table. And as you can see I have five rows and five columns. And the reason why I have five is because my game has five scenes. So if you have 20 scenes, you're going to want 20 columns. Um, and it's going to be a little bit of work, but once you do it, you only got to do it once. Um, and then you can use this table over and over again for other games too. So it's great that way. So I have five, um, five scenes, so I have five um, columns. And so for row one, I just randomly put in the scenes in a random order. So like level 5 first, then level 2, then level 1, then level 4, then level 3. And then for the next one I did level 1 first, then level 3, then level 2, then level... So I'm just basically putting the scenes in a random order without repeating them. Now I only have 5 here so you know every couple times you, you know you might come across it where it plays the same the same set of scenes twice in a row. Um, so the more um, rows you do like this, the um, better chance is that that won't happen to you. I recommend probably doing about 20 rows. And that way it's almost impossible for it to be the same row twice, uh, the same sequence twice in a row. Um, so it's very, it's, it's very easy to do. It just takes you, you know, maybe a half an hour to do that many. But it's no big deal. Once it's done, it's done. Um, so again, every row consists of one set of gameplay. Um, so you'd put every single uh, level you have in a mixed order all the way across. Once that is done, we're going to go back. And a very important thing I want to show you is naming your table. You want to start your table with TB. Um, so later on when you're looking for your, for the table in your attribute list, you can see that it's a table, not an attribute. Because Game Seller kind of mix it in there and you can't really tell what's what. So I always put TB in front of my table so I know it's a table. And then we're going to say random level. That's it. Random levels, good. Okay. So now we're going to go into our scene. And you're, you're going to see we have a menu and we have five scenes here. And each one of these scenes is a different level in my game. Um, so if you have 20, 20 levels, you're going to have 20 of these plus a menu. Um, so I'm going to go into my menu. And I have, I can get rid of this display text. I have two actors. And for this, all you need is two actors. The green actor here you'll see is, I, I called it control actor. That's virtually your tap to continue button. Um, so whatever button you're using to go to the next scene, that's what this is, okay? You can still add your own rules in here, you just got to make sure that these rules are also in there. Um, I'm going to go into attributes first. We need two index attributes. The first index attribute is random set number, and we need that set to zero. The second one is what level, and we need that set to one. The random set number... Um, basically, it's going to choose a random number between 1 and how many um, rows you have in your table. And it's going to put that number there. So let's say it chose 3. I'm going to head back to your table just real quickly. Um, so if it chose 3, boom, you instantly know this is the order your scenes are going to come uh, as you go. So I'm going to go back home, go back to scene, and go back in there. Um, 
so we got that. So random set order to zero, or random set number to zero, and what level set to one. And the reason why we're choosing one is because we wanted to start on column one of your row. So once we have those two attributes, we have a round rule actor. And in the round rules, we only have two rules. This display text you don't even need. I just have it there so you can see it working. So the first thing you need is you need to change game dot set number to random and now this is where the magic happens so when you type in random you want random one comma now if you have 20 rows you could put 20 here and it would it would it would work just fine um, but if you ever want to add more rows later um, you'd want to do this so one comma and then you can use table cell count or sorry, table row count, and then you just choose the table that you have. So uh, when you do this, it's going to say table, you just change it to game dot uh, in your table. And so basically it's going to do a random number between one and however many rows you have in your table. That way later on if you add more rows, you don't have to go back and change any code, it's automatically going to know. And then your next one is change attribute game dot what level to one and the reason why you're adding this is so every time you go back to the menu it changes it back to one so the next time you play it will start right from the beginning again and that's all you need for your round rules now let's go into your control actor and again this is just a display text it's only here so you can see what's going on you don't need this okay so we have one change attribute here and we have two self attributes on the side. Both self attributes you need are index attributes. And the first one you're going to call what's seen next. And you're going to leave it at zero. And then the next one, it's what's seen am I. And you're going to make that a one. Now, you don't really need the what's seen am I one. Um, again, I'm just putting that in there so you can see it actually working. But you may want to add it so you can. Um, see for yourself in your game that it's working and troubleshoot any issues. So I would go ahead and add that also. So once you get both of these attributes here, you're going to do a change attribute self what's seen next to, and we're going to get the table cell value. So in here you're going to use table cell value, and when you do so, it's going to say table uh, row column. And you're just going to delete all those, and in the brackets you're going to first put your table, the table that has your um, random levels. Then you're going to put a comma, and then you're going to choose game dot random set number, comma, game dot what level. So when you're done, it should look exactly like this. I'm going to hit OK. But before I do that, what it's going to do? So basically, you're telling it what table to go to. This attribute tells it what uh, row you want to use, and this attribute tells it what column to choose next. So if you're on column 1, this is going to make it column 2. If you're on column 2 already, it's going to bring it to column 3. And so that's going to basically figure out what level to go to next. Now, here's the part that a lot of people are afraid of. Um, having one rule for every scene, so if you have a, you know 50 scenes, you need 50 of these rules. It's no big deal. You just have to do it once, and then you use the actor over and over and over again. So it's no big deal. Okay. So what I've done is I've created a group here, and for the first one, I had called it one because this is level one, and I said if touch is pressed, because remember this is our tap to continue button. So if I tap this. And you're going to say if self dot what's seen next equals one, you want to change attribute game dot what level to game dot what level plus one. So that way it sets it up for the next level. And then what you say, because this is one here, and if, if what seems next equals one, you want to tell it to go to scene one. And then you'll just copy this rule down here, and you'll call it 2, and you'll change this to 2, and you'll change this to scene 2. And again, this is very easy. You copy it again to here, 
and you change that to 3, you change that to 3, and you change that to scene 3. And you do that for every level you have, and I have 5 levels, so you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now you'll see I have an end here. I'm going to open this up, and in this one we have the same thing when touch is pressed, but here we have if what level equals 6. And I don't have a 6 level, so therefore I tell it to go to menu. And so if you have 50 levels, you're going to have an N1 after, and you're going to say if this equals 51, go to the main menu. So this just checks to see if the game is over, and then takes you back to the menu. Um, you do not need this change attribute in the end one. Once you have that done, you're good to go. Um, what you want to do is now, um, in your menu, this is the menu scene. This is a very important step. Please don't forget this step. So in your menu, I'm going to hit preview here so you can see. <coughs> Excuse me. I call this one menu here. And what I've done for my menu button is I've unlocked it. And I've changed the display text to menu so you can see that. Again, you won't need that. Um, but the very important thing is you have the change attribute here, the what's seen next to this. For the menu one, you have to put it in a timer. And the reason for that is because you need the, um, the controlling uh, round rule actor to trigger first. Um, so I put this in a timer, maybe 0 0.3, uh, which should do it, run to completion, and then just drag it into the timer, and you're good to go. Everything else is the same. Okay, and that's only for the, the menu one, the one that says, you know, start game. Okay. And then what I've done is, in all my scenes, I've gone in and I've dragged the the next the continue button in, and I've opened it and I've changed it to what scene am I, and then so this is scene one. I change it to one. I'll go to two. I've opened it up, and I've changed that to two, and so on for everyone. So I go to three. You'll see. open that up and it's gonna say three and I've done that for everyone so that's pretty much it that we're done we're done we're done now I'm gonna preview and show you so here's my menu button and as you can see by this actor I put it up here just so you can see um, it's chosen row uh, sorry uh, row two um, of the order so now when I hit the menu uh, hit the menu we got one three two five four so that was the order of that game now I'm back to the menu now it's chosen row 5. So now I'm going to 4, 5, 3, 2, 1. And then back to the menu. Now it's chosen row 3. So my new game order will be 2, 3, 5, 1, 4. And go back. It went to 5, 4, 5, 3, 1, 2, 1. Back to menu. So every time it plays, it plays a different order of my scenes. And that's all you need to do. Um, again, you can head on over to gshelper.com, download this video or this uh, demo file, uh, absolutely free, and play around with it. Hopefully, you learn something, and hopefully, you can use it. Um, I'm going to tell you one trick right now. Um, now, you don't have to do this. Uh, some people may not want to do this, but um, instead of um, keeping the I'll go to I'll go to scene one here for instance this loading button um, if you have like say a hundred levels or 50 levels um, loading the scene because of the because of all these rules in here like you're gonna have 50 rules so when you're loading the scene it has to check every one of those before it gets right into the scene um, so one cool trick is um, to sp you can spawn this uh, button after the game is loaded, after the scene is loaded. So in your control, uh, your round rule actor, you can just tell it to spawn this actor. Um, that way, when it's loading to this scene, it doesn't have to check all those rules, and you get a quicker load time. It's not so bad if you only have 5, 10, 15, 20 scenes, uh, but if you're into the 50s and 100, um, you may want to spawn this actor once the scene is already started, and put it into, and have it set into its place. Um, so that way it saves you some loading time. That's just a cool trick. Again, you don't have to do it, but uh, it will save you some loading time if you have a, a lot of uh, scenes in your game. 
Um, but I hope that helps. Head on over to gshelper.com, grab the demo file, play with it. Hope you like it. See you in the next video.